even when it's cold out, you got to rep. I'm going to wear this thing throughout the entire situation. So if you don't like it, there was a time when I thoroughly enjoyed watching all the superhero shows on the CW. The first two seasons of Arrow had me fangirlish with myself more than I've ever been in my entire life. Then they finally made The Flash, which finally turned the believable and real world established in Arrow on its side with a dude who can go from zero to Mach 20 or some shit through the help of some pretty questionable CGI. One crossover leads to this, then to that. Next thing you know, they have seven to ten shows in the same shared uni multiverse thing. And in my honest opinion, the ones that I've watched have all gotten stale. They use the same exact camera angles, whether it's two people talking. Pretty much all the fight scenes have enough camera cuts to make me an epileptic. The last one was only half true. Arrow had some pretty badass fight scenes. Slade Wilson... Raz al Ghul, when Oliver Queen actually fucking died. Even though after Raz stabbed him, he didn't have a stab wound on his chest. <sighs> I'm particularly fond of the Raz al Ghul fight, no matter how painfully obvious Matt Naples' stunt double is. There was none of that same arrow music playing so that it ups the intensity. Dude, the show gave Oliver Queen his own personal Thanos at that point on the cliff. Now that I think about it, those two scenes are pff, remarkably similar. Okay, now, I just finished The Punisher season two, and considering on uh, how I basically just kind of on the CW shows, I can't help but feel like I've just been treated to a 13 episode buffet of just good, raw, and realistic action from a comic book hero with no superpowers, amazing characters, and character development from damn near every character in this season two, and one compelling story that gets all, that all gets tied together through Frank Castle. You see, I think one of the biggest problems with the CW shows is that they're 23 episodes a season. That's way too fucking long. They'll air nine episodes straight to go on a break for a month, then they'll air six more episodes or episode 15, then they'll go on break for a month, then they'll air the last eight episodes, which is 23, and those are three perfectly good chunks of stories waiting to be told and connected for just one overall good season of television. Arrow did this really well, right up until that cliff scene that I love so much. Copyright gets my ass pinned to a wall, so I have to sing over this clip. Okay, Arrow. I obviously have no idea how insanely difficult it would be to try to connect 23 42 minute long episodes of TV considering the amount of characters that the CW the DC has. That's why I think Netflix's peanut butter and Marvel's chocolate mixes so well. They have this formula down. 13 episodes, 1 hour episodes, and 5 minutes of John Bernthal's man ass on my screen. You see? I'm not very happy that Netflix canceled Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and especially Daredevil. I've always compared Daredevil to Arrow more than anything, but I haven't seen Daredevil season three yet, so that's for another video. Regardless, they haven't taken away Jessica Jones, but once season three airs, I know that's getting canned. Uh, they haven't taken away the Defenders yet, technically, which is a really, that's surprising. What if they did just one last team up season? Come on. And I really don't know what they're going to do with the Punisher. Obviously, Marvel has the rights to his own character, so inevitably, it's probably going to get canceled so that Overlord Disney can reign supreme. That really sucks. Really sucks, especially considering how just fucking epic season two is. I honestly can't remember how many times I've made public my man crush on John Bernthal. So it'll be no surprise when I say that, of course, dude, he kills it. He fucking kills it as Frank Castle. Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Edward Norton is, Bru yeah, you know. But for damn sure, John Bernthal is the Punisher. I was going to say Hugh Jackman is Wolverine, but honestly, my man Johnny Bernie has been putting out some... Grizzly Wolverine kind of vibes in both seasons of The Punisher, so just about every main character in the show I love. I love Amy, who started off as Rachel, who was some kind of con artist, eventually turned to Frank's daughter figure to look after. Without her being in trouble, there would be no season two that we got. But Donnie's back. She's just as badass and just as slightly crazy as she was in season one. And her hair, mm, just as every bit as wild as it is majestic. I love John Pilgrim. His character is always just so calm, 
so polite and just so goddamn creepy. You honestly can't predict what his character will ever do at any given moment. But what I like about his character the most is how parallel his path runs with Frank's. Both them and their families are victims of blackmail. Both men will stop at nothing to get what they want, and they both care about their mission passionately. Frank's mission being to get Amy as far away from this mess that she's in, and Pilgrim's mission to kill Amy and her friends because those old evil bastards have Pilgrim's son as blackmail. All just to try and hide their son's sexuality. That's how that goes. The show has so many themes that you could pull away from it, but what I love about that is that Every theme is constant and repeated. One of them that I pulled, one of them specifically was Pilgrim's line. He that sows the wind shall reap the whirlwind. And how he used that to describe Frank in the finale. The camera cuts before we can see Pilgrim say anything else. But I can only imagine the Punisher being the whirlwind can only imply that John tried to reason with Frank and basically said, yeah, so Eliza has my kids as blackmail, and I'm pretty sure she pulled the plug on my wife just to try and motivate me to kill you and Amy more. So if you want, we could team up off camera, you can kill them, and then we both go our separate ways, yeah? <laughs> and uh, that's how you do a complex character who's also one of the main antagonists. Speaking of baddies, Billy fucking Russo. Don't let season two disillusion you from what Billy did to practically anyone in season one. But God, I just can't help but feel so bad for him here, man. Another recurring theme in season two is the idea of redemption or more generally just changing. Frank is changing from a recluse to a man trying to open himself up to others and feelings and shit like that. Amy is perfect for that. They both have these voids in their lives that they use each other to fill. So they both submit to feeling for each other, even if only temporary. They submit to changing themselves. He's gonna say it, he's gonna say it. You change your life. Oh, shit, man. Madani struggles with the law, thanks to Frank's pep talks and Billy turning her into a tweaker. She becomes more accepting of punishment. You like that? That's called branding right there. Curtis, who I love dearly, and who cares about Frank like a brother, is sick of Frank's bullshit. Even though he will always have Frank's back, Curtis makes it very clear that he thinks the Punisher is better left a solo act when you're trying to live a gunfire free lifestyle. It's a tongue twister. My point is, every character in this show changes, except Billy fucking Russo. He may not physically remember what he did or what was done to him, but in spite of that, when he fully recovered, he started doing the same exact things that got him a face only a mother could possibly love. Killing innocent people for money and power. He killed three women just to get inside Frank's mind. That's why when Billy is dying and he's trying to apologize to Frank for killing his family, Frank just shoots him. Whatever I've done, I'm just... You see, Billy most certainly does not remember what evils he did to Frank or Madani for that matter. But no matter what, the second that Frank found out that Billy had those three women executed, bam, season one, Billy Russo is back. Just a little more clueless, a little more insane, scarred up. No hesitation. Frank shoots him before he can say, I'm sorry. Frank knew that Billy hasn't changed in the slightest. But honestly, what's more interesting is Frank's big change from the end of season one. He will never, ever doubt himself pulling the trigger. In killing Billy Russo in the season two finale, Frank has changed. He sealed his fate as the Punisher. Testing faith, ideologies, and questioning the establishment of law and order are just some of the kinds of the themes you can pull from these Marvel Netflix shows. And it's not even mentioning their wider range of camera angles and their choice of music, which I find myself stuck on repeat about. Meanwhile, on Arrow, seasons one through five, Oliver Queen still can't decide if he should kill people or not. Iron Fist was a show that got a lot of hate that I don't think it deserved as much hate as it got. Iron Fist season two was so crazily better compared to its season one. And let's just say by the time that I got to the ending of season two, I found myself fangirling so hard for a character whose comic book I've never even looked at. TV doesn't have to get stale, but much like every character in the Punisher season two, the producers over at the CW have to change. Like it can't be for zero reason that the, their shows are dipping down in ratings and views, right? Marvel seems to know what they're doing with their characters. Like they just have all these arcs laid out on a table 
and they just auto connect the dots and they're like done a whole season worth of character arcs and uh even characters besides frank too if i were to try and locate the definitive beliefs of felicity smoke from arrow I would never finish this video essay. One minute she absolutely despises Oliver Killing, the next minute she condones it, rinse and repeat. Madani does the same exact thing with Frank, but the show keeps it interesting because she's constantly being pushed to the edge and is reminded that sometimes it's really as simple as your life or theirs. Daredevil season two, the choir boy himself is questioning his own faith in God, which to him is quite literally everything. His no killing rule revolves around the idea of redemption change this theme of change is so prevalent it even showed up three seasons ago on frank castle tv yeah. i've seen it what have you seen redemption frank it's yeah. real Jesus and it's possible the people you murder deserve another chance to kill again rape again is it no frank want? to try again frank even though marvel netflix is a part of the greater mcu i wouldn't have minded if they just always stayed separate dude they essentially if you do the math on how long you know 13, 13 hours of tv basically that's like seven it's like seven movies i did the math some shows some marvel netflix shows more than other probably should have been 10 episode seasons but you know it's better than 23. on top of all that they were rated tvma which in the case of the punisher <laughs> better be top it all off they had extremely deep and complex characters that they took the time to explore and make relatable. That's the most important aspect right there. Everything I've said up until this point is basically my, what I've experienced watching all these shows. Arrow, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, The Defenders, Punisher. All these shows have one thing in common, that at one point I loved them. It's true to say that once I watched Daredevil, after already having watched Arrow, especially Daredevil Season 2, I like the Marvel Netflix shows more than the CW shows. The characters of these shows, the Marvel ones, they're written with one goal in mind. They, the writers know what those characters are going to end up as, what, how they start and how they end up. Additionally, the MA violence was enough to make the stakes of the Marvel Netflix shows almost too real, like... There's weight behind the punches and you can feel like it hurts to when somebody gets stabbed it hurts You can feel that shit. The only thing I can do as a fan is hope that DC wow DC Disney Plus has room for all these characters and also that they do them justice They need to take care of my man's John Bernthal and his Punisher seriously like I'm just under 100% certain that Marvel will not be able to find themselves a better Punisher than the one that they have now as far as comics go, DC has always had more fantastical stories and events. Just th just look at Crisis on Infinite Earth. That's happening. That's happening in the twenty. I'm assuming the twenty nineteen CW crossover. Those stories don't really match with Arrow, the show Arrow, because I'm specifically talking about that. I also never read any of the Green Arrow's personal comics. I know he has some good ones, but I did read a Punisher comic where he tricks one of his fellow vietnam soldiers to uh to rape a, Vien a vietnamese woman in the vietnam war just to have her shot in the head while he's raping her only to drown the dude who raped her later either way i loved arrow like as soon as i started season six i just couldn't i wasn't able to feel what i felt at the end of season five at the finale with arrow's second best villain but disney had to do disney and take what was rightfully theirs away from the good people of Netflix. The only reason I'm really making this is because it's it's just a gut feeling that I have that no matter if the Netflix canceled Heroes Return for Disney Plus, the content won't be the same. I don't have any evidence to support this. This is just purely a feeling I have when I see the two words Disney and the Punisher next to each other. So yeah, that pretty much sums up my rant, uh, I guess, about my life, I feel like. I actually never really said what I thought about The Punisher Season 2. Um, it was good. It was, it was pretty good. Easily the best season of Marvel TV I've seen. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and all that fun stuff. And uh, if you like videos like this, and I plan on making a lot more of these, so stick around. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. My mouth is so fucking dry right now. Jeez.